Hey guys, how's it going again? I have uh, want to read through Proverbs chapter 23, but it's 2 p.m. now, so I wanted to do some recordings today, and I, I will get a handful done, I think, but I just want to share with you kind of what's happened between now and the last time that I did the video at 7 in the morning or whatever. And, um... So I recorded the video, and then I was going to edit it in the editor, and that took like two hours to finish or something. It was like ridiculous. And then it was going to take forever to upload. So I was like, nope. So I just uploaded the straight video without any editing. So this time what I'm going to try to do is do the editing within the software, the Screencast-O-Matic software that I'm using to record with. I'm going to try to do the editing there because I can add intro and ending and stuff in there. And uh, so... I'm going to try that, and we're going to see how that will load. And then I went and I recorded a video game for my One True Misfit channel, and it didn't really record from the lapel mic I was supposed to be recording from. I think it recorded from the webcam mic or something, and so the sound kind of sounded kind of watered down, but I uploaded that anyway. Then I think I took a nap until 11 or something, and... Um, I had to run some errands, and oh boy, I came back home, and one of my light bulbs was out. Of course, I didn't have extra light bulbs, so I had to go buy those. It was like in my kitchen, so it was basically like my living room kitchen was dark. And uh, and after I got my vehicle fixed, now when I drive like 55 or 60 on the highway, it starts shaking. And so I told the mechanic, and he's like, well, it could be a tire imbalance or whatever. As far as I know, it was working fine before I took it to him for the brakes, and he took off the tire to to work on the brake caliper or whatever. So, yeah, that stinks, uh, but I'm going to have to go back to the mechanic because I don't like how it's rattling at, like, 55. But, yeah, I'm just saying there's just, just stuff everywhere, and I had to pay for my sight lock security and uh, there was just issues with using my card, and, and they got it, and I had to transfer money on my card and stuff. And all this. So, yeah, it's been an eventful day. So, let's just read through Proverbs chapter 23. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And I don't really know the meaning of that. What What are you supposed to consider... Uh, he says, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. So, uh, that all goes together, I think, at least those first three uh, verses there. So, you know, don't be envious of uh, his food, I guess, or don't let riches or food bribe you in any kind of way. Maybe that's kind of what he means. I don't know. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Labor not to be rich. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. That just makes me think about how it also says in the Bible uh, that um, I think Jesus said it in the Gospels, but uh, basically how moth and rust destroy, you know, earthly treasures, and so we're supposed to be desirous of heavenly things. That seems kind of what this is all about, and I like how this is all kind of together in an easy contest text there. It doesn't seem like he's jumping around a lot. That's kind of one idea. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. So it says, like at the beginning, it says, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, but it says him with an evil eye, so it seems kind of like a bad ruler is what it would be talking about. I don't know. For as he thanketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, drink, and saith, Eat and drink, saith, he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and and lose thy sweet words. 
Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. I don't know what does it mean, enter not into the fields of the fatherless. And everybody has a father, technically speaking, I guess. But, uh... Let's see. When it said, speak not at the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words, that makes me think about not throwing your pearls before swine, also. Remove not the old landmark. He said that previously in the last chapter. And enter not into the fields of the fatherless. So that's something I want to look into. Exactly what that means. It's probably just like, go not the way of the wicked. And why are they described as the fatherless? Um, because, is it because they've become ashamed to their father? I mean, you could say, like, their heavenly father, they're, they're fatherless because they're not sons of God. But it could be, um, it's just basically, it's saying, go not the way of the wicked, I think. For their Redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause with thee. No, well, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> their, their Redeemer is mighty for... For their Redeemer is mighty, and he shall plead their cause with thee. Okay, maybe I was totally wrong when I just said about enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Maybe the fatherless are like the poor or the, the trodden down, and... Is it saying not, not to enter the fields like, kind of like literally like their crops... Or the things that they have, like, don't take stuff from people who are poor who don't have anything to begin with. Because he kind of talked about that in the previous chapter. So I feel kind of dumb now for saying that <laughs> they're speaking of the wicked. But, yeah, I need to look at some commentary on this. But, yeah, it seems like the context is maybe they're, they're, they're good, the fatherless. So enter not into the fields is more like don't take from them, I think. Don't take from their fields. Remove not the old landmark. For their Redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause with thee. Applying thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. So it's saying basically, you know, beating him or instructing him or disciplining a child leads to the betterment of them, basically. And that's said a lot throughout Proverbs, even just, not even just children, but just the foolish or the wicked or whatever. Punish them to straighten them out. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son... If thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. And thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. And I know a lot of people think that hell is always talking about the place of the damned. It could be in this context, or it could just be, you know, again, death or destruction or, you know, the bad, bad things that happen in life um, through going through hell, you know. Um, and, you know, whenever you see soul, you think spiritual, but soul also could just mean himself or just your body, just just you. So it's like you, you'll deliver him from going through hell, basically, by teaching him the right ways, by correcting him, by disciplining him, beating him with the rod. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. 
So I don't like riotous eaters of flesh is speaking of cannibals, literally, specifically, but basically, you know, people that, uh, you know, I think there's other verses, I don't know if it was something that Jesus said or something else in Proverbs, or I don't remember where it's from, but it talks about, you know, basically let us go and devour them and stuff, so it's kind of the same idea, it's just uh, wicked people planning for the destruction of other people, riotous eaters of flesh, that's what I think that it means, just bad people that do harm to other people, that's the way I would look at it I guess, could be wrong about that. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. It's not a good thing to be a drunkard. Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. The buy the truth and sell it not makes me think of the the pearl of great price, or or the maybe not that, but maybe the treasure that's buried in the field. For the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bare thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait for as a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? That's something that I definitely want to look up, that verse, verse 29. And I'm thinking about verse 28, how it says, She also layeth in wait for prey, increases the transgressors among men. Increaseth the transgressors among men. I don't know if this is what it means, but it makes me think about how women can, uh, and men can do it to women too, but how women can pit men against each other, basically. Start a bunch of drama. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Look not at the wine when it is red. That's something really interesting. I'd have to look at the commentaries too. Um, So I don't know if that's like when it's fermented or when it becomes alcoholic or exactly what that's speaking of. Um, thine eyes shall behold a strange woman, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. And so it's adding how... It's kind of combining the whole strange woman whore thing with the drunkenness together. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of a sea, or he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, they shall, they sh shalt they, thou say, and I was not sick, they have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. I'd like to look at that, too. So, I really like this chapter. I'd like to go over that a lot more. But... Yeah, when it says that you're like one that lies down in the midst of the sea, that makes me think also of how don't be carried away with every doctrine, you know. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to try to edit this within the editor 15 minutes. We'll see how long it takes to edit, how long it takes to upload. Hopefully the sound is better. Probably not because the mic was a mile away. So I'll figure this all out. So thanks, guys. God bless.